you have the CPL license number 5 and JRD Tata has license number 1. So the 5th class in Pakistan. So we shut down the right angle and I found that left angle also started coughing a little bit. It was so 10 rupees an hour. That has become a history in aviation for us. Even we have to study the celestial navigation also. You know pilots, subjects are expiring for the issue of CPL because of the RTR exam. If during descent, I found one fighter was circling me. And in 1962, December, the Chinese aggression took place. Before that, one, one of our aircraft was hijacked. There is a shortage of commanders, but not the shortage of co-pilots. So do you think that pilots will be replaced in future by the robots? Hello everyone, today's guest on our podcast is someone with 25,000 hours of flying experience, Captain Sojit Singh Panesar, former director of flight safety and training from Indian Airlines and has worked as a senior flight inspector in DGCA. He has also flown some of the legendary aircrafts like Douglas 3 and Fokker Friendship. He also shared a freaking incident with us where he was actually intercepted by a fighter jet. So in this podcast, we are going to discuss about the trajectory of growth of Indian aviation industry. He also talks about the turning point of Air India's doomsday. So if you are new to the channel, please subscribe and follow us on YouTube and Spotify. Now without any further delay, let's start the conversation. So hello sir, Satri Akal and welcome to India's very first podcast which is trying to go deep and uncover different shades of aviation industry. I really want to thank you from the core of my heart for accepting our request and making this podcast a reality. I assure the people who are listening to this podcast that by the end of it, you will be able to have some really important and valuable insights of aviation industry. So, sir, my first question to you. In your 25,000 hours of flying, can you take us back to your youthful aviation days and tell us about the most challenging flight you have ever piloted? Yes, I was flying from Delhi to Bombay on Airbus A300 and uh, we had a low air pressure light signal on one in the right engine. So the instruction you immediately shut down the engine. So we shut down the right engine and I found that left engine also started coughing a little bit. So I got worried, but we are only 70 miles from Bombay. Then with the pray to God and all that, number one engine became alive and we landed very safely in Bombay. Because okay. I prayed to God, seventy percent on board, please save our lives. Bruce. And that is the time, you know, I had a very challenging experience. And we landed on single engine in Bombay, very safely. Yes, sir. You see, we are trained enough to uh, take off and if an engine fails, single engine landing, single engine <coughs> after takeoff and all, the, enough training is given to us. There is right. no problem for single engine, but if the other engine also starts coughing, then the problem starts. Yes, yes. So that I is a matter of other engine, uh, just, Yeah. Although single engine is no problem for any pilot. And yeah, when did this happen, sir? The, well, it happened in uh, 90... Seven when I was flying from Delhi to Bombay. Yes. On Airbus A300. Why did you choose to become a pilot only? How did the aspiration to become a pilot began for you? Yes, that's a good question. See, when I was studying in fourth or fifth class in Pakistan, we used to see some of the Air Force flying, single engine flying over the area. We never knew then my father told me these are the small airplane, airplane belonging to Royal Air Force. Yes. Anyway, we were based in Quetta, Balochistan, and when we used to come to Punjab via Lahore, and just before coming to Lahore, there was a flying club, and small aircraft used to fly their flying club aircraft. I got fascinated by those aircraft, and I started thinking that I must also fly these airplanes one day. Yes. And from that day onward, I started imagining and reading articles, knowing things about aviation and all that. That's how it raised my ambition to become a pilot. Yes, sir. 
Uh-huh. Then it was told that only after 10th class you can become a pilot where yes. there's a minimum qualification. Yes, so sir. after I passed my matriculation, I started uh, going for competition to UPSC exam for joining oh. Indian Air Force, Army and Navy. I, I attended 11 boards after passing UPSC exam, but was not lucky to join Indian Air Force because they said no. I, although I passed the pilot aptitude battery test, Yet the psychologist said he can never be a pilot. So I got yes. demoralized. Yes. But then uh, there was a advertisement for uh, trading a pilot by Civil Asian Trading Center, Government of India in Allahabad. Yes. I took that competition. And in that competition, I stood first. And yes, I sir. got a scholarship. And those days, the total cost of training for CPL was only 3,600 rupees. That, that included is... 250 hours of flying, 200 hours on single engine, 50 hours on a multi engine, and 75 hours of ANT simulator trading. Yes, sir. And hostel, water, electricity was free. And everything and included in those 3,600 3, rupees. Yes. And so what was the per hour charge charges. of flying, sir? Well, those days, up to you can say night. Uh, 95, 96, it was 10 rupees an hour. It was Some 10 rupees, rupees an hour. Yes. That is amazing. So that is... You were entitled for 100 hours in the first year if you start fresh flying, 100 hours at the rate of 10 rupees an hour. After the 100 hours, if you do one year, then uh, you get 50 hours subsidized flying every year at the rate of 10 rupees. But if you want to do more flying in a year, then you have to pay 25 rupees per hour. Yes, sir. Those are the subsidized days by the government of India those days. You know. Yes, sir. But it is unfortunate now that there is no subsidiary on pilot training and there are hardly few scholarships provided for pilot training in India. Uh, I don't think no any airline uh, government has any scheme for giving scholarships now. The pilots have to do the training of their own. Uh, there are some flying clubs who give you training. And then they have a, one government school, Indra Gandhi Rashti Uran Academy in Fursat Gan. Yes. There you have to go for training. And I'm not sure the, how much is the cost of training in Agrua. Yes. But in flying clubs, it's almost about nine to 10,000 rupees an hour yes. to start flying. Yes, that is true. So, yeah, sir, it was uh, the golden era, I can say, that you people have really done flying on subsidiary and uh, got a government scholarship. Okay. That has become a history in aviation for us. The cost of fuel and cost of other infrastructure, schools and salaries to the instructors have increased, pilot instructors' salaries have increased. So the cost of training proportionately has increased to this rate. Even in other countries, the rate is almost same. Yes, sir. So, sir, there is another fascinating thing about you. And when I got to know, I was really blown away that your pilot license number is number five in India you have the CPL license number five and JRD Tata has license number one. And how did that happen, sir? Oh, well, let me tell you one thing. Before 1963, there were only two licenses for pilot. One was A license, one was B license. Okay. A license was given after 50 hours of flying, including 20 hours of solo, and you yes. can continue flying any any aircraft. And yes. B license was given for the multi-engine or bigger aircraft. There were no other license. Yes. But after 1963, they started a new system, student pilot license, for which you don't need any experience, just an oral test with the chief instructor, and he permits you to start flying. Correct. Then you need private pilot license, which you get after 50 hours, about 20, 30 hours of solo, then some cross-country flying. And after PPL, there's a commercial pilot license. Yes. Earlier it used to be given after 250 hours. Now I believe they are reduced to 200 hours. That mm-hmm. includes the day solo, day dual, night solo, yes, night sir. dual, and cross country by day and night. Yes, definitely. And then after there is a senior commercial pilot license, which they have uh, now removed it. Now there are no senior commercial. And after that, the final airline transport pilot license. Other license, ATPL. If you have to, go, if you have to fly an aircraft, about the weight of 5700 kgs. Yes. You got to have an LPP. Correct. That's correct. Below that, you can do that with the commercial pilot license. Yes, yes. And it started from 15 flying training course in 
Nala Bang, which are the last batch. And uh, from our system, the new system started. And uh, from our batch, there were 21 candidates. There, uh, my CPL was number five, the new system. Yes, Jani Tata must be having the old system as number one. Correct. Yes, sir. He must be number one as a B, B license. Then converted Understood. into CPL. Understood, sir. Yeah. So, so that, and you have done your training in Allahabad. And that was the only flying academy in India at that time. Yes, that was the full-fledged academy. It had a different uh, schools, you know, like uh, air traffic school, navigation school, technical yes. school. Yes, sir. And all the schools, they were experts, teachers and all that. They used to give us a good uh, teaching at that time. Even we had to study the celestial navigation also, yes. which is later on removed from the CPL subject and all that. Yeah, yes. And planning, plotting, this is not done now. Planning yeah, and yeah. plotting. So many things have changed with the change of time. Correct. New systems are coming and all the effort, uh, giving license to the pilots. Yes, sir. Sir, you have also flown four different airliners in your career. Number one was DC-3, Douglas-3. Number two was Fokker Friendship, Boeing 737 and Airbus 300. Which one among these was your favorite flying machine? Which aircraft you enjoyed the flying most? Well, I enjoyed maximum, I can't forget the flying of the Kota DC-3, mm -hmm. where you have to use all the skills. Yes. There's no design computers and all that to give you any solution for any problem. You have to make your own flight plan, you have to look at the ground maps and all the navigation was also like that. And uh, that was the best flying and that increases your aptitude of flying also. Yes. Otherwise, flying the jet aircraft, I found Airbus A300 was the best aircraft, which is an exact aircraft. It's yes. a three crew operation, captain, co-pilot, and flight engineer. Any emergency comes on the screen, you just announce the emergency, low pressure, yes. co-pilot takes out the checklist, and flight engineer, they both do the checklist accordingly. Correct. And you are like an executive pilot, you are sitting in the cockpit, monitoring all the things. Yes, sir. It's the most beautiful aircraft, an executive aircraft to fly with. Correct. Close now sir. they have removed even the flight engineer because they have computerized the system. Yes. And Jumbo 747, which also needed uh, flight engineer, they have removed the flight engineer. And they, the certain panels they have introduced with the pilot can control all the system. Yes. So, sir, you have also trained Air Force cadets for the, their flying, but you got rejected 11 times when you have appeared through FCAT and all. How did that happen? Yes, I would like to tell you something. You know, I did my, after I was rejected by Indian Air Force six times, I got demoralized, then I took this competition, Allahabad. When I did my commercial pilot license, yes, sir. I joined Delhi Flying Club as an instructor. They gave me a training as an instructor. And in 1962, December, the Chinese aggression took place. Correct. And that is the time when Indian Air Force realized they are short of pilots. Yes. So they did a mass selection of pilots for Indian Air Force. And they decided to give them 40, 50 hours of flying in Delhi flying, all the flights. They selected four or five flying clubs. Then the initial training up to 50 hours, we give them in the flying club. Yes. Then weed out certain pilots and then the, who passed out from there. Then they used to go to the Air Force Academy. Yes. And that is how I have trained the Air Force uh, cadets in the Delhi Flying Club. That and is it beautiful. was the finest experience for me about. Yes, sir. That because is beautiful. Learn, learn the mistakes of others. So from being rejected by the Air Force, you ended up being the instructor of Air Force. So that is amazing, sir. Well, I have trained Air Force pilots after the giant leaving Air Force, the giant Indian Airlines and Air India, they came and I did their training on a DC-3 Fokker and Boeing. Sir, there is another incident where you got intercepted by an Air Force fighter jet. How did that happen? <laughs> well, I have trained a lot of Air Force pilots and one of them was a fighter pilot. I did a flight from Delhi, Le Chandigarh, and lay back to Delhi. While I was coming from Leh to Chandigarh, yes, sir. during descent, I found one fighter was circling me. <laughs> I got into panic. Maybe it's a Pakistan <laughs> fighter who was trying to chase me. Yeah. Then I asked the ATC Chandigarh, he said, nothing to worry, sir. 
you just uh, you are clear to descend and land at Chandigarh. When I landed Chandigarh, I found a small fighter, MiG fighter coming close to parking in the civil area, and the pilots put the brakes and came out of the MiG. He said, "Sir, I am your pupil. <laughs> you are complaining against me. I was welcoming you to Chandigarh." <laughs> As I didn't know that you were welcoming me, you trying to threaten me. Yes, sir. Because on RT, we used to give the flight plan for the next sector to ATC. And when I gave my name as Captain Patesha, so this fellow must be flying around and he started circling me. Correct, that sir. was the one scary kind of happy incident <laughs> in my life. Yes, sir. Initially, it was scary, but yeah, sir, your heart must yeah. be pumping very hard when you saw the MiG intercepted you. You see, before that, one one of our aircraft was hijacked. So I thought maybe it's a Pakistani fighter who's coming to circle me and trying to scare me or what. I didn't know. But oh, later on, yeah. I came to, he was my trainee in Delhi Flying Club. Yes, sir. And he was flying MiG and welcoming me to Chandigarh. You know, you have a treasure of memories and experiences. Well, uh, let me tell you, flying is an exciting career. Yes, sir. It's a very good career, very... You know, encouraging and all that. You enjoy this uh, flying like a bird in the air. You see the atlas. In atlas, you see the cities and a lot of rivers. But when you go up and look down, you get a very good feeling and all that. Yes. Sir. And when you fly at night flying, the cities, they give you lightning as a Diwali is going on. You know? True, sir. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very exciting career. Correct. And I can assure you this, uh, you know, in aviation, we have a slight... Uh, uh, boom because of the corona and all that. And aviation is going to expand in future. Yes, sir. Because our Indians are spread all over the world. And yeah. all world people who are uh, who want to visit as a tourist different country, they're also waiting for the skies to open up because of the COVID problem. And once the problem opens, you will see that there will be a boom of uh, pilots requirement in aviation. Yes, because you can appreciate you can't fly from Delhi to Chicago by Shatabdi Express. Yes, sir. You have to go by air. Every now and then, we keep seeing articles, you know, stating pilot shortage in India. And India is unable to produce enough pilots to meet the market demand. How far is it true? Because according to my point of view, I don't think there is any shortage. Instead, hundreds of pilots are sitting at home waiting for the airlines to open up vacancies. What's your take on that? See, let me tell you one thing. When they say shortage of pilots, there's a shortage of commanders, experienced pilots. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of pilots who have done the endorsement training. They have the co-pilots on the aircraft. They can't be taken in straight away as a commander on the aircraft. Yes. A pilot who comes into the airline, he has to fly as a co-pilot under super V and certain number of hours. Then he has to be tested and he will be given a lot of checks and all. Then only he's cleared for to fly in command and that too on certain routes on certain routes he has to do special checks like by going to lay sirinagar and all these places you have to do special checks before you have cleared so yes. there is a shortage of the commander but no shortage of the co-pilots the airlines are taking them because now with the time the senior people are retiring they need commanders also yes but that process will take little time and people will get jobs Copilot yes. on the ground, they will get a job, and the airline to train them on their own aircraft, heavy jet aircraft, it takes time. Yes. You see, it is not easy for a copilot to become a commander. Yes. There is a shortage of commanders, but not the shortage of copilots. Understood. Sir, there is a follow up question on the same topic, and it's of huge concern among the trainee pilots of India right now. Airlines in India are asking for absurd amount of money in the name of high rating and airline training, making it almost impossible for middle class people to aspire for a career as a pilot. They are demanding 50 lakhs to 70 lakh rupees in the name of this type rating and airline training. So is it is it not unfair? Uh, well, let me tell you, there are two airlines which started a cadet training program. One was Indigo, then the Spice Jet. Yes. They took pilots, absolutely raw pilot with zero flying hours. Correct. And they gave them a little bit of ground training in India. Then they have a contract with the academies in America. They send them there for flight training. Of course, the, they must be charging some money for their own benefit also. 
but uh, that is the program for uh, starting and getting a job right now. Yeah. Only two airlines have started. And because of the fuel cost and the training cost and the instructor's salary and all that, the training cost has gone up definitely. Sure. It was not the whole time. When I when I was an instructor, I was getting only uh, 2,000, 3,000 rupees in Delhi Flying Club. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yes. now the instructors are getting more than 3 lakhs, 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs, you know, depending on the training they're giving. Correct. So Correct. all that expenses, the trainee has to bear also. Yeah, yeah. But once you start getting a job, you start getting salary, you enjoy the job. It's a very exciting career. Correct. So, so it's a, it's full of adventures. Yes, it is. You uh, you see different places, you meet different people, and uh, you see the change of timing. You're going from, like, let's say you take off from Delhi for Chicago on Air India at midnight, 2 o'clock. Yes, and when you land in Chicago, it's at 7.30 on the same day. <laughs> yes, sir. So all these things you enjoy also, and the pilots also enjoy flying and changing of time zones and all that, you know. Correct, sir. Whenever any crash or incident takes place, how true are the facts presented in media? Are? Can someone completely trust what the media talks about aviation? Well, let me tell you, Earlier, the DGC used to do the investigation of incident and accident. Correct. And they had no experts, actually. The government formed a committee. One committee was Air Marshal State Committee, who went through the whole training program. And he said, DGC is a regulatory body. They do not have any experts to investigate incident accidents of high-tech aircraft. And there were a lot of protests to separate the investigation board from DGC. Director General Sebele mm -hmm. it's only a regulatory body to conduct exams and issue licenses. Yeah. Now they created another board, separate board known as Aircraft Accident Investigation Board. Yes. But unfortunate part is they also do not have any experts to investigate the incident or accident. They are just right. doing by hit and trial method. Mm -hmm. And investigation process is a very highly technical process. It is not just you put one captain of an airline, okay, go and investigate the incident and accident. You yeah. need an experience. You, there are few crashes that took place. I have taken part in investigation of few fatal crashes. One in okay. Ahmedabad, one in Bangalore, 320, yes. and one in Delhi. You need a lot of experience to investigate incident accident. Well, there are so many things as per the manual of International Civilization Organization. Mm -hmm. In India, you see, let me tell you the main theme of the investigation. A cow book says, all incident and accident should be investigated, not for the purpose of punitive purpose, but for the effect to find out why a pilot made a mistake, was intentional, unintentional, or without knowledge, and to set the system right so that such incidents do not take place in future. Yes. But here in India, they are done mostly for punitive purpose. I tell you, one small incident took place. Aircraft taking off from Trichy to Dubai at midnight, he yes, just scraped the boundary wall. Yeah. And he was directed to land in Bombay. He landed in Bombay safely, all passengers safe, aircraft safe, aircraft after minor pace flying. You know, the DGC suspended the license of pilots for three years without any investigation of an incident, without any reports and all that. What more can be tragic on the part of the DGC? Okay. They are no love loss for the pilots. They just look at the whether the pilot can grease their palm or they look for the, the political connection. Yes, sir. Otherwise, how can you take three years for investigation? Is it not okay. a matter of shame? Yeah. They have definitely. finished the career of those two pilots. No, those two pilots went to the High Court Madras also. Madras, mm -hmm. after two and a half years, gave a judgment that you take them back immediately. Mm -hmm. And believe it, they have yet not been taken in. Now yes, you sir. tell me, how do those young boys feel? This is how the, the demoralizing agencies in our country. Yeah. Ministry of Civilization, DGCA, not a single competent person in aviation. Yes, it's a very sad state of affairs. And they do not want to involve the professionals or veterans and all that. Yes, sir. And flying being such a specialized career, it is difficult. Once a license is suspended, it is hard to earn money from other sources. We have given our life and yes. our energy 
see today a pilot takes tons of money on loan or from friends or something and he goes for trading he spent lakhs and lakhs of rupees in trading <laughs> and when he, mistakes do happen it happened in every career whether you're yes. doing you're driving a car or aircraft or anything but we must find out why he did this? is it intentional unintentional or some fault of the airline or maybe fault of the air, air traffic control yes see why these incidents are happening they can be there is a solution for everything but you have to have competent intelligent honest people to investigate the incident can you imagine in the calicut crash the investigation team sent a circular of questionnaire to the people who survived in the accident okay. one of the question was did the air hostess announce the evacuation process after the crash when the aircraft is broken into pieces cockpit is in shambles you may say air hostess will start announcing how to get out of the crashed uh, debris and all that yeah. if this is the cap capability of the investigation team you can well imagine they are given a report of 280 pages yes. and believe it except 10 15 pages rest is all technical manuals they put it in the report yeah they have copy pasted different things which are no use in the report correct and now who all are going to accept the report also is also a big question whether yes. they have any experience of flying yeah. i'll tell you another example yes sir the pilots have to undergo a radio telephony test by the ministry of communication yes unless they pass they don't get a FRT or license to operate RT on board the aircraft. That is as per the international yeah. convention and rules of the country. So, sir, those people who are taking exams of radio telephony, believe it, they have no experience of RT operation. Correct. I have challenged them. I'll yes. I'll take one of these people who examine these pilots on a flight from Delhi Bombay. I'll pay the fare. Let mm -hmm. me see whether he can operate the RT or not. Correct. I have put up a case against this thing. and i the a case is pending with the central information commission i don't know when they come back to my questionnaire hey, what are their qualification who has cleared them to check the pilot to check a pilot he must know how to if i ask you give draw the diagram of circuit for mobile mm -hmm. can you draw it you should yeah. know how to operate the mobile that's how okay they are asking question that like what is diode what is triode what is the function of satellites what the yes. pilot has to do with the satellite yes but they ask it whether they feeling you know out of they only pass in one side two to three percent pilots only yes and those pilots are still are the young boy they cry because they ask a stupid questions but nobody yeah. is there to check them you see that's the question they become almighty now yes yeah, there's no source you can you can go and appeal me and along with me a few pilots we are taking up this uh, venture against the ministry of communication civil aviation but they do not uh, encourage to listen to us you see yes sir. we, we I... only want to work so that the indian skies are safe and pilots are flying happily they do not want to take fight with the government of india the babus who are handling they are very powerful they are given wild power they can take any action against anybody yeah so pilots are scared to come out with the facts against these people no renewal of a license issue of a license it takes months together Correct. on one side the honorable minister said we have gone online online system you apply and all that ask yes. ask few of the pilot yeah. when you apply for commercial for how, after how many months you get it yeah there are for... where they take with three to six months to issue a license yes that is true that is true sir see our suggestion was that the dgca has a directorate known as flight inspection directorate with their pilots from different airlines yes they why don't they conduct the exam for the rt and give a license like other country emirates and all that a pilot who is doing a check ride of a pilot he gives a license that he is certified to operate rt on board correct why this wireless communication people who are never seen the head and tail of an aircraft they take yeah. exams for the pilot without any experience of flying experience yeah the dgca should take up this matter with but there is a ministry of uh, communication they say as per wireless convention in geneva and all that we have to conduct the exam and give a license to operate yes they should give it only for the engineers how to yeah. operate the how to repair the systems and all that but not to a pilot yeah pilot exam should be conducted only by a pilot who knows how to operate an rt yes 
and even in countries like us and canada even in countries like us and canada the rt is not it is given by the school itself rt is issued by the school itself it's on record it's on record they don't need the rt or exam and all that you know pilots subjects are expiring for the issue of cpl because of the rt or exam yes sir who is responsible for this they spend tons of money they waiting they are harassed they are getting mental uh, you know they are becoming mental cases now they the my like three time four time five time appeal they are not passing them correct and there is another thing around it sir they are you know people are even paying 2 lakhs 3 lakhs as you know bribe to the examiners just to clear their rtr exam that is also a ground reality well you see remember one thing corruption has become today pride in our country unless you pay you don't get the work done it has advantages also yeah. that you pay your money and get the work done but how many people would like to pay how many people can really pay so much of money yeah but the system has become so eroded now it's an open secret now about the corruption in aviation which is a very sad thing to have a government as a initiative they should have to initiative to call meeting aviation meeting conferences to listen to the professional call the veterans and all that they will give the advice of the experience and they will suggest also few things a person who is involved in an incident at accident believe it is his own colleagues also leave him they don't come near him okay. and pilot does not want to fight the, against the dgca and the medical board they are scared yeah. of these two people yes so it's a Sir. very sad thing it can be improved it can be improved not that there is no solution Mm-hmm. our honorable pm has given a statement in the parliament yes there is babus who have no experience of aviation running a heavy industry they are given the charge of air india and other la and he said they are not fit yeah. even one of our, our earlier honorable minister mr civilization he said these babus are padhe likhe bevkuf and they are mm-hmm. disgrace to the nation but yet they are given so so much of powers you know they can do and you know the recent gazette, gazette they floated the dgca gazette they in the gazette they say in future commercial pilot license and airline transport pilot license will be valid for 10 years yes very good it's a very good uh, idea yeah. but the next next sentence is if you have not used the privileges of your commercial pilot license and eltp for 3 years your license will be cancelled you have to start restart from the beginning Correct. Suppose due to corona or medical, you could not fly for three years. Any aircraft above five seven zero kg, your ALTP will be cancelled. You have to start training again. And for example, you have done an MBBS degree, medical degree. Yes, yeah, sir. And you don't get a job for three years. You may say you have to go for medical training again. No, no, sir. Yeah. Instead, notification issued. I am not sure. Uh, I know the situation whether it has been passed by the parliament or not. It doesn't make any sense. This ghosted notification has been. no if this is the standard of people in the regulatory body suggesting system what can you do now tell me yes sir there was a speech by mahua moitra in the parliament where she says that there is no other country in the world apart from bangladesh and india which has a separate independent ministry for civil aviation every other country has sold and privatized their national carriers and evolved themselves into a larger transport ministry see mahua mitra is a young lady very experienced very experienced very honest yes sir she's a fire mp and believe it most of the country the transport ministry is involved in everything in america ntsb national transport safety board they investigate incident and accident and they keep on giving day to day information to the public correct here they do not want to involve the veterans yes and we requested to uh, involve the investigation they said no they do not want to have judicial inquiries we wrote a letter to the secretary also why don't you have a judicial inquiry so many people have died in calicut crash they said it is government decision and people who were investigating this uh, incident accident believe it they had no experience to express the accident yes yes sir it is shocking the 282 pages report i have seen if you go to you i think the other country will be laughing at our system yes they don't take that much of two and a half year for investigating minor incident 
can you believe it can anybody yes. in the ministry of the dg say answer today and stand up i am ready for any punishment if they give a good reason why they are taken two and a half years is a matter of shame on these people correct sir those so there are carriers were those to pilot they have become mental cases now yes and she also continued saying that 60 to 90% of ministry of civil aviation's budget was spent on air india and air india has made around 120000 crore rupees of loss in the past 10 years this figure is really big uh gurujot let me tell you one thing air india and indian air were separate corporations till 2007 before the merger of these airlines both the airlines were in a profit of 207 crores as per the cag report government report mm-hmm. now you tell me from 2007 to today how they come to 90000 crores of loss is there nobody accountable yeah they send the is people babus who do not know how to run a huge industry aviation industry and they come here to enjoy and uh, i don't know what do they do and how they nobody is accountable for all these things correct two committee think committee of form by government of india tata committee kelkar committee and air force committee they announced that there should not be a merger of air india and indian airline mm-hmm. it will be a big uh, disaster if you merge them you have a common chairman and two mds for both the airline but the honorable minister at that time who came he merged the airline and today yeah. you see this is how the losses have come correct right. Now, 320 crash took place in Bangalore. We ordered latest flyby by record 20 aircraft. Yes. One of the aircraft crashed in Bangalore, and the honourable minister, without any investigation, without reports and all that, he grounded the aircraft for eight months. This aircraft was flying all over the world. Yes. Except India, where we have grounded 20 aircraft, 19 aircraft. Imagine ah. the amount of loan money, interest money, salary to the pilot, and running of the engines every day. How much it cost? Airline could not raise its head after that. Yes. And now, after eight months of grounding, when the Kuwait war started, they started using A320 to bring a refugees. How it yes. has come safe overnight after eight months? Yes. Have they done any? Nobody is accountable. Honourable minister is not answerable. Nobody is answerable for this loss. See, this is one thing in only country where you can commit murder and you are not accountable. Yes. So what can you do? Things can improve. There, there is a chance for improvement everywhere in every field. Yes. But sir. you should, you should have the will to improve it. Correct. But I am sure in the regulatory body, DGC, how they conduct the exams for pilots, how yeah. they issue the fake licenses also. You see. A pushback car with a small single engine car, Delhi to Lucknow, suppose it takes one and a half hour, two hours. Correct. If he rides on eight hours in logbook, the pilot who is uh, checking the logbook does not know whether it takes eight hours or two hours. Two hours, yeah. He is just interested in the total of the hour. That's all. Yes, sir. So this is the same thing happening in multiple academies who are operating in uncontrolled aerodromes. What they do is they don't fly. If they fly for one hour, they log it as two hours or one and a half hour. So it's a fake log. They are doing twenty-five percent, thirty percent over logging also in the yes, uh, uncontrolled airport. Yes, sir. Controlled airport. They are not bothered, but if there is an investigate, somebody complains, then they start investigating. Correct. Yes, sir. So think that can be improved. There is no, there is nothing that it cannot be solved. All problems can be solved easily, and our skies can become very safe. Yes, sir. So the airlines are interested in flying and all that. And what about the training part, safety part, safety conferences, safety meeting? Yes, sir. It's very rare. Right. One crash took place. Helicopter crash in South where one of chief of defence staff was died. And believe it, those helicopter that helicopter was the most sophisticated helicopter. Yes. And yet they they crashed it because of the no instrument experience. Yes. So what can you do? You see, the, I uh, it's a very sad thing, you know, in helicopter yes. pilots having crashes. Sir, there was another issue raised in the parliament, saying that we are trying to build more and more newer airports, but are not focusing enough on the existing airports to improve its standards. Airports such as Jaipur, Leh, Srinagar, there there is a lot to be done to improve its infrastructure and standards. 
city government has to form a committee and find out where is the traffic requirements. I'll tell you the joke. They made one runway in Delhi, runway 1, 1 and 2, 9. Yes, sir. And the Honorable Minister has been telling on the past, all over the world, this is the longest runway in Southeast Asia, 16,000 feet. Yes, so sir. I asked under architect, tell me, why it is not being fully used? It's only used 60% of the runway. Yes. They say, no, because the ship Murti is on the way, on the landing path. So we have to displace the landing touchdown area. I say, when you made the runway, was the ship Murti before the construction of the runway or after the construction of the runway? They say it was before the construction of the runway. Then why didn't they change the direction of the runway? No, pilots have to land. They have to apply heavy braking. And 16,000 feet runway, they are not, it is not being fully used. Yeah. And the other part of the team with the foreign team came, they gave the map of the these three runways in Delhi, 0927, 1028, 1129. All three, they have shown parallel runways. Mm -hmm. I asked the DGC, are they parallel? They said, no. I said, but how you are showing on the map, they are parallel runways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sir. So there are a lot of things which can be taken into account and improve the aviation for safe aviation in India. Sir, there is one more interesting thing which you told me when we were talking to each other that your mother gave you some serious advice when you were flying as a student pilot. What was that? Oh, that was a... Good joke. You know, when she came to Allahabad CATC where I was under training, so my friends told me, take your mother, show the aircraft which you're flying. They were not much security. Like, the aircraft in the hangar, I took her there. She said, don't touch it. It might fly. I said, it is not a uh, pataka that will fly. He said, mm -hmm. I'm not a pilot, but listen to my advice. Yeah. Whenever you fly in aircraft, do not fly very fast and very high. Fly <laughs> low and fly slow. <laughs> she said, fly <laughs> yeah, sir. So that was her thinking, you know. Right. But today, you know, they got flying at Mac 1, Mac mm -hmm. 2, and yes, they're flying at 33,000, 37,000, 39,000 feet. You see? Yes, sir. And today, Delhi to Chicago, you can reach in 15 hours. Could you ever mm -hmm. imagine to going this San Francisco in 17 hours? Yes, sir. It was taking more than months together to reach by sea and all that. Yes, sir. Today, the, because of aviation expanding and all that, you reach so fast. This is a milestone we have achieved uh, in our human evolution. That is for sure. Yeah, we can improve. We can improve our aviation safety in India mm -hmm. much more. Provided you involve the veterans, you all the experience, you have people with the aviation experience. Yes, Indian airline, Air India were ruined, ruined by the bureaucrats. They had no experience to run the airline. And many people were promoted just because they had connection, political connection or other connection, not on their proficiency and all that. That is true. So yes. what can you do? The, the things are very... Uh, now Tata has taken over Air India. And we expect because Tata organization is a commercial-oriented organization. Correct. And they have a huge, huge department of experts, aviation experts and all that. He is uh, owning Air Asia with Tata which are running successfully. Yes, and we are, we are hopeful and sure Tata will be able to improve the Air India. Yes. And sir, and uh, things will change for the better. Correct. Yeah, so let's hope Tata will make two skies back again and it will become number one airlines once again. That's our wish. That's wish of every pilot right now in India. See, when, when, the, when the Tata was the chairman of Air India, most of the world airlines were jealous of Air India. Yes. Because their services, on-time performance, passengers' care, and safety operation was so good, they were all jealous of Air India and Indian airline. Excellent. And the moment the, the bureaucrats have started taking over, they have no concern for the safety of aircraft, pilots, or anybody. We yes. have a huge training center in Hyderabad yes. for pilots. I don't know how much it is you how it is used and all that is a matter to be investigated only. Correct. So when we listen to your experience, when I got to know about your adventures in aviation, the very first thought I got on my mind was 
that this is what a successful aviation career looks like. This is what any aviation enthusiast like me dreams to have a career like. But what does success mean to you? What is your definition of success? No, it is a good career and you have to, a pilot who joins, he should not think that I've got a LTP, I've got a command on the aircraft, my career is over. No. As long as you have to fly, you have to keep your technical knowledge, navigation knowledge, meteorological knowledge, and experience of flying current all the time. Correct. It is not that you have done the graduation exam and that's over. No. You have to keep on studying till you keep on flying. You have to keep the technical knowledge fresh. With new changes coming up in the system, you have yeah. to be aware of all the things. Yes. There's no end of learning in aviation. You have to continue to be a successful pilot. Okay, and you can be a successful pilot. We had a system of holding conference, aviation conference, calling the different airline pilots, engineers, and discussing things. Yeah. We were a member of Flight Safety Foundation in America. They have many conferences in a year. We are member, but pay. But no, just to pay their fees and all that, we have drawn the membership. Yes. The many airline pilots, they come, they discuss their problems, aviation problem, engineering problem, meteorological problem. We used to share the knowledge. Yes. And then they used to make a list of all the incidents and uh, our share of the statement. And they used to send to all the airlines. But now we have withdrawn our membership from that uh, Flight Safety Foundation also. I do not know the reason for that. Yes. So, yeah, there are a lot of uh, problems and it's a huge concern right now. Safety, safety is at stake. There is high money involved. A lot of uh, student pilots' career is involved right now. And everything is dependent on DGCA. They there is no shortage of professionals, intelligent people. Yes, But you have to call them and assess their intelligence and aviation and all that and take them up, use their expertise, experience. Correct. This can be only done if you have at least various uh, safety conferences at different places calling the pilots and engineers mm -hmm. to share the experience. Yeah. And aviation has expanded so much with the IT and all that Every incident, accident can be investigated at the fingertip, but not number of two and a half years or three years. Correct. Today, you can take out the, you know, on the DC3, there was no DFD or FDR. On the Fokker yes. Friendship, there was no DF, DFD or FDR. On a Boeing 737, we had a DFDR, which used to record only height, heading, speed, and uh, your G effect for landing. Correct. When the Airbus 300 came, there were more than 60 parameters. Yes. A320 a more than 300 parameters. Yes. There's no charge for any pilot to tell lies. An incident, accident, any flight can be observed in a fraction of a second how he is operated. Correct. Even a pilot increases the rate of descent or anything, it can be known immediately. And the, in Indian Airlines, they have a department, computer section, where they monitor the DFDR, then they counsel the pilots also. Yes. So now, sir, so what what is your advice to the coming generation, the, the people like me who are trying to become pilots in Indian aviation? What is what, what future holds for us? My only advice is you must keep studying the and keep your knowledge, technical knowledge fresh Correct. and keep your eyes open for what's happening in the world. Yeah. All incident activities which are happening in any other world, you must go through and study why it happened. But the pilot mistake, whose mistake? And then you have to be vigilant in the cockpit all the time. Although computerization, like going from Delhi to Chicago, you follow the computer. But yes. you have to keep your ears and eyes open in the sky also. Yes. And monitor how many flights are flying in that area and all that. You have to be careful. Sir, will this automation, will this automation and uh, technology replace the needs of pilots in future? No, automation has been a boon for the pilots because you the size of operation, air, flight operation starting, it is not possible to do hand flying and start calculating things also. Okay. The computer does a job for you. For yeah. example, between east coast of USA to Europe, there are more than 3,000 flights a day. Mm -hmm. So you have to monitor. You can't do hand flying and keep writing flight plans and all that, which we used to do in DC-3. Now, everything is a computer. You get information at the 
touch of a computer. And they do not permit the high-speed aircraft to be flown by hand because hand flying cannot be as smooth as autopilot. It right. will not. Uh, hand flying can stretch the you know spars and all those things at a high yes. speed. Yes. But autopilot will handle it very smoothly. Yes. So, will you think? Is, so, do you think that pilots will be replaced in future by the robots? Well. I, I don't think so, but you never know the time changing and what type of uh, technology comes up. Right. Airbus has started, uh, I think they did operation of a flight without a pilot. Yeah, unmanned. I don't know the reports, how successful they were and what are their recommendations. Right, sir. But pilot is required. We don't know what sort of emergency may come in and all that. Yes, sir. I, I think the pilot has to be there at all time to monitor the safety of the aircraft. Yes, because technology has brought us to the edge. You know, we are able to fly with such a high speeds and at such a high altitude. But if something goes wrong with the technology or software, the safety of the aircraft drops rapidly. See, we are happy that new technology is eased a lot of things for the pilots. But he has to keep his eyes, ears, and mind open to see what is happening in the sky. Yes. You see, like I was coming from late to Chandigarh, I thought somebody hijacking me. <laughs> because I saw the fighters circling me. Yes, sir. I was vigilant to look outside the sky what is happening also. Correct. So, being a vigilant and having good knowledge of your aircraft, technical knowledge about weather, Yet weather is also changing very fast, you know. Yes, we used to have very serious weather in East India, like uh, Kal Bishaki in the evening used to come as a Norwester, you know. Very Correct. dangerous. Line squall. Yes. Sir. The moment you see line squall, we used to go about turn. Two, yes, two three crashes took place who tried to venture go through the line squall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The federal crashes in Calcutta. Yes, yes. So all these changes, a pilot has to keep his knowledge, fresh knowledge, and keep his eyes open for all these things. Correct. Yeah, true. So, only single episode with you may, uh, cannot justify and, you know, cannot grasp the experience from you. We will be keep doing more and more episodes with, with you and bringing out more of your experiences to the audience so that they will learn something out of it. So, it is, it is high time Professionals should get together, aviation professional. They should form a separate body to also. The government does not allow the professionals to enter in the investigation, incident, accident. Correct. They do not want to take them. Because they do not want a judicial inquiry. Yes. In their indoor inquiry, they can do anything. They can interview anybody. They can change the... Sir, let us hope that more experienced people and more aviation enthusiasts come into this sector and try to improve its quality. That is what I hope from my generation. I pray to all the people to get together, discuss your problem and all that, to make our safety of aviation, yes. more safety in the air and all that, you see. And the people should fly happily over India. Yeah. In every, every pilot's career, there is something called zero to 200, of, uh, 200 hours of flying. And after that, you live a different life. So, out of your 25,000 hours of flying experience, which part of it you liked it the most? Zero to, 24, zero to 200 hours or 200 hours to 25,000? Well, zero to 250 hours was my experience for the purpose of the issue of commercial pilot license only. Correct. And my actual experience started when I became an instructor in Delhi Flying Club. Yes. Because that gave me, my opened up my eyes in training and all that. Because you learn a lot from the mistakes of others. And those mm -hmm. mistakes made by people who are absolutely show, coming fresh, knowing aircraft and all that. For example, you know, I was training one candidate on a Tiger Moth. It's a tandem cockpit with a two pilot, one in the front, one in the rear. So he asked okay. him to keep the nose up, nose up. He kept on moving his nose up. <laughs> then he said, sir, I can't keep my head down. So that was my mistake. I realized later on, I did not train him properly. Instead of asking nose of the aircraft, I said, move your nose up. So I learned a lot from my training for two years in Delhi Flying Club. And thereafter, I had no problem. Correct. 
Yes, sir. Because you always learn by teaching all these young boys. Who initial training is a big, big uh, uh, learning lesson for me. I learned a lot from the training of these young boys. Yes, sir. So this brings to the end of our podcast, and I hope everyone who is still listening to it have taken some valuable insight of aviation industry. There is nothing to dishearten. Yes, there is nothing to dishearten. The future is still bright for aviation industry, and there are a lot of opportunities which are going to come up. Aviation is going to flourish, sir. It is going to flourish much more than what it is today. It is only because of Corona we had a little setback, and yeah. Corona cannot live forever. Yeah, you remember earlier there were viruses like cholera, smallpox. Yes, they sir. also came and gone. Cholera yeah. has also come and gone. He has done the damage. Is what he wanted to do. Yeah, but aviation has to expand. You know. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of uh, our relations, friends spread all over the world. Yes. People want to come for tourism. Yeah, so India is currently the largest market in the world, and people are coming in to do business deals and lot more. So definitely, flying is going to flourish. We have a lot of tourist places also. Yes, flight to tourist places were going almost full throughout the year. Yes, sir. we must plan for another podcast people like you have to share their stories have to bring in the knowledge on platforms like youtube so thank you sir thank you so much for coming on the show